right, good morning everyone. Thanks for coming to my presentation. Um, today I'll be talking to you about um, mental health and family resilience. Okay, first of all, I just wanted to uh, give you an overview of um, family resilience and the research that's been done on this topic. Um, so the field started off by looking at individual resilience and then by the 1980s, researchers were more interested in the family and looking at their strengths um, and their processes. Processes. Um, so they shifted from looking at strengths to process, um, but now that we are in 2018, um, we found that it's actually a multi, um, dimensional and a really complex construct. So if you look at the resilience research out there, you'll see individual resilience, you'll see community resilience, but today I'll be focusing on family resilience. Okay, so what does the research say? So um, in terms of resilience, we found that it's associated with um, physical and mental health, health outcomes. A lot of the research that's out there is cross-sectional, so we've looked at maybe resilience and physical and mental health at one point in time. And now what I'm gonna try to do with this study is to look at this longitudinally. So is there gonna be a difference um, in mental health, um, mental health outcomes, if we're gonna be associating that with um, family resilience? Um, there's also a lack of understanding as to how um, resilience and mental health looks like in, um, in diverse populations. Um, so there's lack of understanding about what this looks like with racial minorities, with LGBTQ groups, um, and also just um, not as much on, on the family system. All right, so my goal um, is to examine patterns of growth and change in mental health across five time points in a diverse sample. Um, so my overall research questions include um, investigating rate of change in mental health, and I also wanted to explore family resilience as a covariate of mental health um, while controlling for wave and gender. So data from this study um, is taken from a larger study um, that I'm on, um, which is to evaluate the effectiveness of a housing, assist, uh, sorry, housing assistance program. Um, we partnered with a community with the, um, the, with the HUD, uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development. Um, we used the surveys to capture data. It's a longitudinal study. And in this um, particular analysis, I'm looking at five time points. And the way that our data is organized is organized according to WAVE, um, which is based on our study. So each um, year we've collected data, it represents a WAVE. But we also have organized it according to time points because we're recruiting participants every year. Um, our WAVE 2 might be recruiting participants at their time one time point. Okay, so my participants. As I've said before, this is gonna be a diverse sample. So we have 90% female, 10% male. This is a younger sample, um, age is 35, low income, 23,500 is their annual income. Marital status, most people are single. 13% um, are divorced and 5, 13% are married and 5% are divorced. Um, for race, um, this is a mostly racial minority sample. 65% are African American. 20% are Hispanic and 15% are Caucasian, 1% other. Most of our participants are unemployed, followed by 35% um, who have full-time employment and 25% who have part-time employment. And for education, um, most of our participants have at least a high school or a GED um, education. Okay, measures. Um, we have demographic survey, um, and then for the, my mental health um, variable, I use a brief symptom inventory, the anxiety subscales. Um, there are thousands of studies that have used general anxiety um, as an overall measure of mental health. Um, excellent psychometric properties, alphas, are probably, I think, 0 0.8, 0 0.5, 0 0.85 to 0 0.89 for the studies that have used this particular measure. And my, my measure of family resilience includes the individual, family, community, and resilience profile. So this was a measure that was developed specifically for low-income communities. Um, and within this measure, I use the family resilience subscales. Okay, so how do 
did I analyze my data? I use something called hierarchical linear um, modeling. <laughs> this is what we use when we have nested data. Um, and I also, the, the way that we organize our data um, made it a little bit easier for us to use HLM as opposed to um, SEM if we wanted to do a growth curve model. Um, and also for a few other things um, as well, um, hierarchical linear modeling um, is better able to tolerate um, um, by um, assumption violations compared to other statistical analyses, uh, statistical methods. Um, you can even say that HLM is resilient. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in this study, I have two models. The first one is an unconditional growth model. Um, I have one outcome, that's mental health. My second model is a conditional growth model, same outcome, mental health. I use family resilience as a covariate and I'm controlling for wave and gender. Wanted to control for wave um, because just looking at a snapshot of the data, we were wondering if we were gonna get cohort effects because we're doing a longitudinal study. Okay, so what did I find? So just looking at mental health, we find that it's, there's a significant rate of change, um, which is to be expected. This confirms what we know about mental health. It doesn't stay the same for five years. It, it does change, um, but I don't know, is that, is that interesting enough? We just know that it changes. Which brings us to our second model. Once we bring in family resilience, we find that a one unit increase in mental health uh, predicts a 0.19 decrease in family resilience. That's really fascinating for us clinicians who are working with the family unit, where we can kind of link mental health to what's going on with the family system. So this is what I think is the strength of this study. Um, and what I would want to see in the future is, um, in this sample, we were only able to, um, to work with heads of household. I would be really interested to see if other members of the family will have the same kind of data um, and will have the same kind of mental health outcomes. So if we maybe collect the data on their partner and we did some you know, dyadic data analysis or we looked at data with the children, how does this affect their mental health? Um, and does everyone have the same perspective of resilience? Um, and we also work with families that are in communities that are dealing with a lot of obstacles and challenges. Could we look at community resilience? It's the relationship between that and mental health. Um, also interested in looking at maybe additional health variables such as um, physical health. We just use one measure, we use anxiety subscale, but how does this relate to depression, um, trauma, PTSD symptoms, trauma symptoms? Um, so that would be really interesting to look at in the future. Finally, I just wanted to touch on why this study is important and how it links to um, SAMHSA's initiatives. Um, the first one um, I think it links to is the prevention of substance abuse and mental illness. This is a, di a diverse sample, it's a marginalized community, um, and we're focusing on mental health and family resilience. These are families that have chal contextual challenges that they deal with every day. And in addition to that, they have these mental health challenges. I think doing research in, on this topic helps us um, um, better prepare for our work with these um, communities and these types of clients. Second initiative is healthcare and health systems integration. This might give us a little bit of an understanding as to why um, minority populations, um, low income communities are less likely to seek help for um, mental health services. Um, and hopefully this can reduce some of the health disparities that we see in this community. All right, thank you. Questions? Mental health um, is the uh, I use anxiety subscale, or I use.